this is some sheets that you can get and bring those for the first box at the end to answer any questions you may have. Anyone have any questions or shall we go to the department? John Sanders? Thank you. Buy some Priuses and cruise the neighborhood looking for crime. 
Thank you. Kate Katani, Katalia. I'm here to talk about the LRAS atomic weapons. They are horrendous. I'm not sure, I hope that some of you have done research on them. Um, but I want to bring two things to your attention. Um, first of all, I think that you need to seriously be critical of the argument that the chief of police is bringing to you, um, that she is using as a base to justify her request for this weapon. The events of that day, a year ago, when we were there peacefully protesting with children, might I add, um, against a president that is racist, that is um, very actively enacting policies that are meant to, to kill and harm and separate um, us. We showed up peacefully, and the police chief's idea, I think, that when um, she requests that protesters disperse from what is their constitutional right to gather, that request is unfounded. And even if you shouted, even if you deafened me in my ears, saying that I cannot protest in that moment, I know that I have the right to be there to do that. So I think that there's, there's a foundational a problem with the argument that's being put forth to the council for why these weapons are needed. Second, I want to say that just today I heard that J.J. Johnson, a community member, had, had uh, received the results from a public records request and the public records request was about uh, the chief of police's um, lack of a, um, uh, what's it called, a, call, a public uh, request for proposals, um, which the chief of police should have done. Um, she did not make a public request to a number of different companies for some machinery that would elevate her voice, her officer's voice, which she did. She specifically made a contract with LRAC. So this should prove to you that she was not looking for some device to elevate her voice. She wants this weapon. She wants to elevate the device. And I think you can assume why. Thank, Thank you. you. Linda Clark. Thank you, Mayor and Council members. Um, because we are the fifth largest city, or approximately the fifth largest city in the United States of America, um, and because of the fact that we are one of the last major metropolitan areas in the United States of America to not have a civilian or some type of oversight police board. And again, I'm in the middle, so I get attacked by both sides. But the police have become militarized. That was demonstrated last year. I was there during most of that protest when uh, the president was here. So. Because we don't even have an oversight board, and, and I understand why you're afraid, because as a politician, it's basically political death. You've got the Phoenix Law Enforcement Association, and I have them coming after me now, giving me tickets for every little infraction, selective enforcement, this type of thing. Um, you know, we need to have accountability before we start handing over military-style weapons. And I say this because knowing there are officers who have given their lives and put their lives on the line. Again, see, I will get attacked by the other side. But there are other officers that shoot, question, shoot first and ask questions later. I know this because in the military, I was in the military police unit, very many good individuals, and some of them served here. But the thing is, you know, we need to have some type of sociological training, psychological training, and people are not thinking. And these cannons send exactly the wrong symbol. Uh, message. Nobody's buying this. Oh, they're just for talking to the public. That is not true. We all know what their use is to be, you know, for. So, anyways, it's, it's not about one side opposing the other. It's about the laws of humanity. It's about the Constitution of the United States. Whether you're a Trump supporter, you're not a Trump supporter, whether the police come after you as a Trump supporter or not as a Trump supporter with sonic cannons, with plastic bullets, you know, we need some accountability first, and we, that's what I'm asking. Please vote for us. Thank you. Thank you. Mary Hernandez.
in warfare and to be used as a weapon. If we want a loudspeaker, let's use a loudspeaker. Get a loudspeaker, cool. Let's get a speaker. But this is specifically used as weapon and has weapon options. And I agree, go, go get a test on yourself. Right? Go see what this has caused. This has caused extreme pain and ripple effects for people who have had this used on them. So that's one. So even if this were free, and as people talk, they've talked about a grant before, even if this were, that time should have been spent figuring out how to de-escalate what is currently the deadliest police department in the country. Not to continue to add weapons to that. And finally, um, part of what happened last year with the truck in, in the, uh, yeah, in the protest and the police using excessive use force, I heard it say, well, we have this weapon, we could have used this. The thing is that there were a lot of things that the police department could have used that night, and it has been shown over and over again that there were no warnings given. So it doesn't matter what the things that they, that you know that they could have used this, they didn't want to use this. They didn't disperse the crowd. They didn't put warnings ahead. They didn't communicate to the community. And so this weapon for us is a clear attack and continuation of a culture of violence that is within the police department. A culture that has caused mistrust with the community. The community does not trust this department. And adding more weapons is going to continue to further impact and continue to further separate the community from a police department. And we're going to continue to use these weapons. So we're, again, we urge you all to vote no on this. The community has come several times saying to vote no. There are other options to find other options to get a lot of speakers. Good afternoon, Mayor and Council Members. My name is Maria Teresa Mayfrey. I'm a resident of District 8. I'm a third generation Venetian, and I'm super proud to be a Venetian. I'm proud of my city. I'm proud of my people and where we come from. I'm proud to say that I'm going to raise my children when I have them here in Phoenix, and I am disheartened and dismayed that this is being heard once again when the community comes and tells you that a militarized weapon that continues to be misnomered as a mass communications uh, tool or something that's misnomered, and I'm gonna say it plainly, somebody's saying that it's something that's not an acoustic, acoustic tool to actually produce and militarize, continue to militarize the most violent police force in the US. So I'm also an m electoral justice fellow, and I also think it's disheartening that this is actually being heard the day after elections when so many of our community members struggle and bust our butts to make sure that folks like you are elected to make sure that you represent us. So I hope that you hear us today, and I hope that you hear that when you choose, you're making a choice for our people, when you choose to invest in a militarized weapon and invest in militarizing a police force that continues to cause so much harm to our people as a third generation Venetian, that you are disinvesting in community, that you are disinvesting in community safety, that you are not investing in our community's futures, and that we want to talk about the Trump rally, there are lots of mechanisms in which community relations happen in a real, tangible way, and if you want to have a conversation, we can have that way and, and figure out what that can even look like, but that hasn't been an offer that's been set to the table, and so I'm asking you to vote no. I'm asking to vote no on the militarization of our police force and invest in community safety. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yes, Um, in any way fits with community-oriented policing. 
Um, and so to support this is to su continue to support what has been problematic in our public safety. Um, and we continue to see that our most valuable resource is our people. And our community has continued to show up to say we are willing to invest our time and efforts to create a safe Phoenix. Um, yet we don't see that responded by the city of Phoenix with actual investment to build those relationships. And so we keep coming um, and, and saying these things what seems to be on deaf ears. Um, and so we're here yet again asking you to vote no on this. Um, again, this does not build in any way a sense of trust. Um, it actually continues to further the divide that we feel um, and to further entrench the fear that continues to be on the minds and on the hearts of the people that you're called to represent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Service needs, and it would increase the distrust that the community has 
for policing in our community. Um, I would offer and suggest a more peaceful resolution, uh, an opportunity to have some community-based training and come together to have a conversation about what the community and the police department could do to better support each other. As you know, the police department also goes home and has families. So if one of the family members was in a crowd and a jet engine passed by and their child did not have protective ear covering, it could create that damage. But in a violent situation, this is, for lack of a better word, painful. Thank you. Lola. Thank you. 